What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're going to be talking about a deck that I don't think is getting enough attention, which means that this video might not get enough attention. Make sure you guys watch the videos. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about Salaman Great. Yes, Salaman Great. Now off of the ban list, we got Circle back to three, we got Stalio back to three, and this deck is low-key, very like hyper consistent in today's format. And it doesn't lose the cards like D-Barrier or Non-Fusion Area, two cards that are being sided in pretty heavily in today's format because of decks like Sword Soul and Despia being some of the top decks. So I think Salaman Great has a good chance to compete in today's format. But if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Yu-Gi-Oh! content. We've been doing a ton of post bandless content. Hopefully next week we go back to our regularly scheduled program where we do the vlogs, we do the duels. I want to show you guys some new format duels as well because that's going to be fun. But I don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long. I hope you guys enjoy. And with that, let's get into the deck profile. First thing we are doing though is we're starting off with Triple Flame Buffer Load. This card is extremely powerful. One of those cards that triggers Gazelle in hand. It gets you draw advantage. And that's the thing about this deck that I really want to talk about. This deck is super, super consistent because Buffer Load is going to draw cards for you you have circle back at three which is going to get cards to your hand you have cyanide mining you have pot of desires back at two there's so many ways to draw cards and not just play with your opening five cards which was one of the biggest problems of this deck for a long time because of the ban list but now with circle back with desires back those first five cards that you're playing with are not going to be the only five cards you're playing with so that's why buffalo is really really good of course three spinny three spinny is very important triple foxy as well foxy is probably one of your better normal summons really other than buffalo you don't really want a normal summon in any of your other Salaman Great Monsters, but Foxy, I guess, is the better Salaman Great Monster to normal summon in this deck. Then, of course, you're playing one Salaman Great Gazelle, two Jack Jaguar. The reason you're playing two Jack Jaguar specifically is because you're playing Desires back at two, and you always need one in rotation to keep grinding throughout the game and keep playing. So Jack Jaguar is very important to play at two, just because of desires and then we're playing one falco as well as one foul now foul is a really good card here because if a salamander great monster is normal summoned or special summoned to your field you can special summon this card from your hand the other effect is just that it targets a set spell or trap card and stops it from being activated but the main effect to special summon itself is very important because baguska access in this deck is very very important so i'll get into it when i get into the extra deck a little bit more but getting into baguska is very important with this deck and that's why salamander great foul gives you the opportunity you also have parallel exceed which gives you that as well and parallel exceed is a very powerful card in this deck so you do want to be playing two of any normal summon or any salamander great monster really in your hand makes this live because you just go into bailings and then this is essentially live right so parallel exceed then we're just playing so many hand traps again because this deck draws so many cards because it has so many searchers you just really want to draw into all your hand traps after you do your full combo or if you draw hand traps with your draw cards then you just draw into the salad stuff so that's why this deck has so much synergy and so much consistency because if your opening hand is one half of the deck you use your draw cards to get into the other half or if you go into the other half of the deck then you use your draw cards to go in the first half i don't know if that makes sense but what i'm trying to say is you're always going to have access to pretty much everything in this deck and super super consistent so we are playing triple ash one of the best hand traps in the format triple crow i think this is one of the best hand traps in the format hits a multitude of decks it also avoids things like branded lost which a lot of branded builds are on so that you know ghost spell can kind of be dead sometimes against them but dd crow is always going to be live dd crow is also live against so many other decks if you think about the theory on matchup if you think about like even just the random rogue decks dd crow is really really good you have three effect veiler and three imperm sword soul despia is really good and sword soul you know will kind of fold to imperm veiler especially if you hit their normal summon and even if they have like a long one to special or to continue playing if you hit the second one they're kind of just done so veiler imperm are very important in today's format then of course we're playing triple salaman great circle of course this card just came back to three the first effect obviously to add a monster from your deck to your hand especially you can do it in the draw phase because it's a quick effect is very very important but the second effect is really really important and i feel like a lot of people forget about it so it reads target one salaman great monster you control that was link summoned using a monster with the same name so essentially if it was relinked and that link monster is unaffected by monster effects this turn except by its own so why that's really important is because sometimes if you have a sunlight wolf one of the things that this deck loses to really is their monsters getting destroyed by card effect because your traps rely on your monsters being on the board right so for that reason you can use your salamander great circle you can sun target your sunlight wolf your sunlight wolf can't be affected by monster effects essentially so if they have any monster effects that would remove the card or get rid of the card they can't really do it so circle is really good in that sense then we're playing triple cyanide mining cyanide mining is really good it also triggers your gazelle so cyanide mining is very very powerful 
level three will of the salamon great now i was playing two for a long time but i decided to play three and the reason for that is because it's just a free monster reborn to start things off which is really really powerful it also special summons from your hand if you wanted to so that's really good as well but the other effect is really good because if you have a relinked monster essentially turns two and turns three this helps you push for game a lot because sometimes if you have just a relinked sunlight wolf you can target that summon back two monsters and you can keep pushing from there because that gives you access to stuff like the access code play it gives you stuff just to push for a lot of damage so will of the salamon great is very important one salamon great sanctuary yes if you guys are wondering okay you guys are playing desires why do you only play one sanctuary because you always want to just get into it before you do your desires now keep in mind so of course we're playing two desires here right i want to mention that when you play this deck and you have a desires in your hand unless your hand is literally like four hand traps desires then you really just want to hold desires until later on in the combo and what i mean by that is if you open your combo right what you're going to do is you're going to try to combo 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 and then once you end on your board and you have all your pieces in rotation whether it be in your graveyard or on your field or in your hand then you can go desires and then use the desires to draw into something like your ash or dd crows and your hand traps so that's why desires helps you push further but it's not necessarily always the first thing you want to do and then of course we're playing one call by the grave one rage as well as one roar now i actually really wanted to play two roar because roar is really actually kind of good to draw sometimes but i think one is fine again you guys can see we're already at 43 cards which i didn't want to go past 40 but the list that i was looking at all played like 44 45 sometimes and i just even 43 for me was a lot but i get it because there's so much draw power and so much search power in this deck that sometimes you don't want to draw into like multiple circles or multiple cyanide mining so i kind of understand why more than 40 but yeah i try to keep it as minimal as possible i think 43 is a good number here then for the extra deck we are playing one baguska baguska is really good because remember how i mentioned earlier foul gives you access to something like this so does your parallel exceed baguska is really good because flunderies is a very relevant deck now of course baguska is good into a lot of different decks right but if you just put a baguska on the board flunder has no way to play around it because as soon as these normal summon any of their like monsters they'll go in defense position the effects are negated they can't really do anything but you can also argue the same thing about sword soul if they have like a moye or a taie or something in their hand that they need to go off they can't do it because of the baguska so baguska is actually really really powerful into a lot of decks and it doesn't hurt your deck at all because you're just going to be making your link monsters at the end of the day so if you just sit on link monsters and baguska you're in a, such a good and demanding position where your opponent really can't do anything unless they have some kind of answer to Baguska before they have their normal summon or they have to commit their normal summon, right? So that's why Baguska is really good. We're also only playing one Mirage Stallio. Now, yes, Mirage Stallio came back to three at the most recent ban list, but you never really needed at three. I know it sounds funny, and this is just the logic that I've actually seen from people who were topping events with this deck, is that Mirage Stallio is always going to be put back into your extra deck with your Jack Jaguar anyways, so there's no reason to actually play a second or third one. And then on top of that, once you use your first one, your goal should try to be just going for game on your next turn anyways. So Mirage Stallio, funny enough, even though I was shocked by this, but the more I tested it, the more I was like, you know what? Yeah, you only really need the one because once you go into your first one and then you can just drag Jaguar it back whenever you want, that's really all you need. So Mirage Stallio at one has been working perfectly fine for me. There is an argument you can put it at two and let me just show you guys what you can take out. But first we are playing, of course, one Axis Code because that helps you OTK. We're playing two Heat Leo and this is the card that you can remove for the second Mirage Stallio. A lot of the time you can actually just play the one Heat Leo and then play a second Stallio. Leo, and the reason for that is because yes you lose the heat leo relink effect but there's not many times you're going to be using it anyway because the whole goal of this deck later on in turns two and turns three is to go into access code anyway i just wanted to have that option to relink into the heat leo just in case you needed to but again you can cut the heat leo to one and play mirage style at two that's just another option but yeah you definitely need to be playing at least one heat leo but this is just what i wanted to show you guys so you can play one heat leo two style leo, or one style leo, two heat leo then you're playing one trans code talker Three Sunlight Wolf, of course. Three Bailings, of course. One Update Jammer. This is part of your OTK as well as Splash Mage. So Splash Mage, Update Jammer, Access Code is your OTK combo. So you really need to be playing those cards in your extra deck. And then we're playing one Heat Soul. Now, some people were trying to tell me to play two Heat Soul. And I understand the logic behind two Heat Soul. But the thing is, as soon as you use the first one, you're going to be drawing two cards, right? By the way, this is exactly what I mean by you just get so many draws with this deck. Because not only does the main deck get you a lot of cards to your hand, but your extra deck does too. But the thing is with heat soul that kind of is like you don't want to play more than one because as soon as you make your first one you're putting yourself down to six thousand life points essentially right now yes you get a draw two which is perfectly fine but in your turns two and your turns three i don't see and i never had a situation in testing where i wanted to make another heat soul 
rather than just going into my access code OTK combo or going into Sunlight Wolf with back row or going into, you know, just having a ton of hand traps. And like, you know, it's kind of one of those things where it, Heat Soul is really good on your turn one play because you get to draw a bunch of cards. But in what situation do you want to keep going into Heat Soul in turns two and turns three because you should be trying to push for game and trying to push for damage? I don't think you need to be playing two. Yes, it's a great card. Don't get me wrong. I think the card's amazing, but I think you only really just need the one for the deck. And the deck is just already super consistent as it is. And I've been enjoying this deck so much. And don't be surprised. I think this is a sleeper deck. Don't be surprised if you start seeing people top your locals and top regionals with this deck. I've already started seeing it. So I think this deck is really, really good. And again, the only thing if you guys wanted to swap out or change, you can cut the Heat Leo to one to play a second Mirage Stalio, and that's just another option for you. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. With Heat Soul, Circle, Mirage Stalio, this deck is super hyper consistent, and it can keep up with today's metagame and compete at the highest level in today's metagame as well. So if you guys enjoyed the deck profile, make sure to like the video, and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. There's a lot coming on the way. Remember, five uploads a week, Monday through Friday. Make sure to stick around for that. Thank you guys all for watching with that spanko sign and out peace